Well, hello there. How are you? Welcome to the show. This is Around the World in 80 Beers with me, your hairy, adventurous host, Scott Ironside. Some damn fool has charged me with the task of tasting as many different beers in as many different countries as humanly possible. And I, like some sort of alcoholic psychopath, have accepted. But uh, there's no any bars or breweries to be seen here. I mean, right now we're in the, uh, the northeast of Scotland. Um, this is Aberdeenshire, this is where I actually grew up. Um, beautiful countryside, lovely place. Um, but no decent beers, no the kind of beers that I'm looking for. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to head to some metropolitan areas. We're going to head to Edinburgh, right? The capital. I know a guy there called Richard McClelland who works for the uh, Williams Brothers Brewery, if I remember correctly. I hear they do a severe amount of tasty beer. So we're going to head down there, get a few scoofs in, chat to the boy, see what the story is, and kick off this world adventure. But first we need to get a bus or something. That looks like a bus stop down there. We'll head down there. Yeah, you got to change for the book, oh my god. Welcome to the Vintage, Scott. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Glad, glad to see you brought the weather with you today. Absolutely. Fantastic. So, welcome to the Vintage Bar Leith. Thank you, man. Thank Scotland's you. Uh, newest craft beer bar and kitchen. It's nice. Excellent. Glad, uh, glad you like it so far. Um, so, the, the idea is that we show you a nice teasing shot of the, the, the kind of um, the final product, and then um, today you now hit the road. Right. Go up to Castle Stalker View, where we um, harvest one of the main ingredients for a very special beer that we make. Right. Take you out to the brewery to meet the, the brothers Williams and the gang out there. And then we'll finish back up here at the end of the day and have a, a, a test of the, the final product, as it were. We are going to a beach Aye. to get ingredients for a beer. Yes. Well, I heard that you're going to be travelling the world finding yes. the, the most, uh, the most uh, outlandish and uh, outrageous craft beers on the market. So I thought I wanted to start off by setting the bar quite high. So okay. we have a particular product called the, the Kelpie Seaweed Ale. Seaweed. And I'm sure you can guess what the magic ingredient in that one is. <laughs> Alright, you've made a seaweed beer? Yes. Um, it's, a, it's actually a very old uh, recipe, it comes, it's inspired by the 1850s. Right. And uh, the seaweed they would use to naturally fertilise the barley then. So the barley would take on the kind of essence of uh, sea salt which would come oh, really okay. through on the nose of the beer. Right. So we've taken it one step further. Um, we got up to the, this beautiful location on the beach which is very close to one of the first bars that we ever sold beer to and um, hopefully the weather will be with us today and we take the, the seaweed from the beach, um, two different types, and then we put it straight into the mash tun with the beer and uh, we achieve what we hope is a similar kind of um, interpretation of that historic ale. That sounds fantastic. So we've got a traditional Scottish recipe being thrust into the future with the, this new sort of resurgence exactly. of craft beer. Exactly. It's very much the, the kind of uh, the, the mantra of the, of the Brotherhood, you know, to take historic ales and to take uh, traditional ways of brewing, update them and then, um, as you say, really pour them on into the future. So I get to make my own beer today? You're going to get to make your own beer, but only after you come with me and harvest the seaweed <laughs> from the beach up at Castle Stalker. So, nice one. Shall we hit the road while the suns are shining? Let's get going, buddy. Excellent. Nice one. <laughs> So Scott, we've made it down to the beach at Castle Stalker View. This is where we harvest the seaweed for the kelpie that we're going to make this afternoon. Right. So I'm going to ask you to do the honours if you don't mind. Okay. Everyone gets their hands wet first time up here. <laughs> right, okay. 
Okay, so we've got now, some seaweed. Now, is there two different types that we're looking for here? Two different types of seaweed go into the blend, that's correct. And the, the story behind it is essentially that in the 1850s, um, the seaweed would naturally fertilise the barley. So it would give it this kind of um, sea salty air to it. It's a nice sea breeze across the top of it right. when the brewers brewed with that particular barley. So to replicate that, we now harvest this seaweed and we put it right into the mash tun. And you would think that that would give a, a really odd taste to it, and it doesn't, it really only affects the odour of it. And in the same way as putting salt on a really nice bit of dark chocolate or caramel, right. it brings out the flavour of the dark chocolate, the bitter uh, coffee kind of taste that you get. All right, cool. You want. But that's about enough for a pint, so I think you're going to have to get a bit more, and we'll get a couple of bags and head right. out to the brewery, all right? All right, okay. Mail. Mail seaweed. Aye. Okay. I'm the gaffer today. Okay, fair enough. How much? Just keep well, we'll going just, and I'll tell you when we'll to stop. We'll just declare the seaweed, will we? <laughs> it's is fairly self-replenishing. This is the right stuff, is it? That's the right stuff. That's the name. Seaweed. <laughs> okay, let's get a I think we've got a, a good haul. Let's go make some beer and get drunk. So Scott, as you can tell by all these lovely shiny objects behind us, we're now in the, the area of the brewery where we keg the beer, right. and this is also where we store and dispatch the beer. Okay. So this is you getting the kind of final piece of the puzzle at the minute, you know. Right. Also, this is a little clue to where we're going with the future of the brewery. Um, Williams Brothers Brewing Company is very famous for historic ales, for cask beer, then we took on a big bottling line, and we're very much at the heart of the craft beer community in Scotland. Right. As I said to you on the way in, there's 75 breweries up here now. They all can't have bottling lines, and they've not all got distribution, so we, we all work together. We do the bottling for seven of some of the most famous breweries in Scotland. They bring the beer down here in big loads. We bottle it for them, store it, and it gets dispatched out. And it makes you all kind of work together to find the best possible solutions and it creates yeah. a great camaraderie and that's what it's all about. That's good to hear. Exactly. So as I say, kegging is definitely where the future of craft beer is going. Not just in Scotland, it's been very much influenced by the west coast of America and the US craft beer movement. Aye. Uh, Bruce is out there just now, he's teaching them how to do cask beer and they've kind of given us a lesson on how to do cold, crisp, fresh beer that's carbonated because that's what they like. And to be fair, that's kind of where the, the, the you know the largest part of the UK market still is. That sounds like it's going to be a good mix in the future. Exactly, I think that's it. You know, it's, that's what our whole brotherhood of brewing is about. The Williams Brothers started with two brothers and a family, and it's grown up to this worldwide kind of collaboration of people that all interact with each other online. has been a great thing for the craft beer movement, you know. So uh, it's, it's, it's a good, fun place to come to work every day. You got one of these to spare? Of course, we'll get one in the back of the... <laughs> Back of the truck to take back when we go back to the bar later on. Right, I fancy making some beer. Can we make some beer? Of course. What I'm going to do is take you through, introduce you to some of our young brewing team just now, and uh, hopefully Scott Williams will be there as well, and we'll get you into the into the mash tun. Magic. Let's go. Excellent. Let's go. How are you doing? I'm Scott. So am I. How's that? Fantastic, really. <laughs> Is that possible? <laughs> Great name. Um, I hear you're the man to talk to all about uh, well, making beer. I can help you with that. Now, I... we've been to the beach and we've collected all this seaweed mm -hmm. uh, to mark uh, your kelpie beer. Well, you've, you've done part of the hard bit. Is uh, you know, Obviously, you had to wait till the tide went out and got the, got the kelp in the bladder egg. Um, I'll have to check on quality control, see what you've brought back in, will you? Right, so maybe my seaweed's not good enough, is that what you're saying? It's possible, yeah. right. it's possible. <laughs> Doesn't take any old shitty seaweed in this <laughs> stuff, you know? Okay. Um, all right, so the, the, the idea behind it was that we're adding seaweed into the mash tun, which you'll, you'll see later on. Right. That's, where, that's where all the barley goes in, it does its steeping. So we're trying to reproduce the flavour of barley that would have been grown coastal, everywhere, everywhere coastal in, in the UK. Right. Very famous in, in Scotland. You just weak the seaweed out of the out of the water, mm -hmm. spread it on the fields. It's a natural fertilizer. It's full of 
pulling all, all the nutrients. I mean, most nutrients and fertilizers that you'll get nowadays in pharmaceuticals are taken from seaweed in one form or another. Really? Absolutely, yeah. So what we do is we introduce the seaweed into the mash tun to try and recreate the flavors of, um, of coastal, coastal whales. I didn't realize it was so scientific. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, I think we're probably going to pop along and see something else. Okay, well, enjoy. Absolute pleasure chatting to you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Take care of yourself. Hello. Uh, I'm maybe going to steal some of your beer. Oh, why? Okay. Oh, why? So you are. <laughs> Scott, these fine majestical vessels here are our conditioning and fermentation tanks. So you've got lager beers here, you've got real ales. The lager is going to be sitting at about 11 degrees. Real ale is going to be um, somewhere between 18 and 20 degrees. And then the conditioning tanks, um, our lager, our Cayley lager, will probably sit there for 90 days at least. That's um, the minimum time, and that's the, the kind of the, the, the optimum time for conditioning, kind of like they used to do in the old Czech Republic. Right. 90 days. 90 days. But I want a beer now, Richard. Don't you worry, I've got some ready to go, boss. Let's go. So, Scott, I bet there was times in the, the past day that you didn't think you'd make it back to the bar. I have been looking forward to this beer all day. Well, I took you on the journey, didn't I? I said we go from the beach to the brewery, a bit of hyperspace in the 4x4, <laughs> and back to the bar for the uh, final drink this evening. Fantastic. You, uh, you drive like a demon, by the way. I do. Ah, you're a crazy well, man. I've heard that you drink like a demon, so <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we'll get stuck in. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a really dark colour of stuff. I think that's your, sort of your chocolatey... That's, the, that's the, the chocolate malt and the Munich malt in the beer that uh, yeah. gives it that dark colour, that's correct. Slanger? Oh, the best here. Well, I'm going to take that as a 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah, good. I'll have another. Another round. That right, was good. Two more kelp at the bar, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's some tasty stuff, man. Really tasty. So was it worth the journey for you, oh, do you think? Oh, man, oh, I. But then a day of hard work always sort of marks you want a pint mayor, doesn't it? Exactly, definitely, or a wee skinner. And uh, do you think this sets the standard for the rest of your trip around the world now? It's going to be hard to beat. It's going to be hard to beat. This has been, I mean, it's, it's a nice beer, it's nice and refreshing. You can, you can really taste all the flavours. It's great just to get it done. It's a lovely, lovely beer. It is Thank a lovely you. beer. Well, I'll have one waiting for you at the finishing line after your 80 <laughs> beers around the world then, alright? We'll come back here, we'll come back here. Cheers, my man. Nice one. Thank you so much. Okay, this has been Scotland. We've had some amazing beers. We've met some really, really interesting guys. But, uh, you know, it's too damn cold. So, I fancy some heat. Let's go this way. Oh, oh that's much better. Much better. Welcome to sunny Florida. Get in, you little beauty. 